Good evening and welcome to Community TV of Santa Cruz. I'm Lou Tuosto and I am your host this evening for another uh, show, of Let's Talk with Lou. Uh, as usual, I'm always excited to have guests, especially those that are very involved in our community. Uh, and as usual, we've got two very involved uh, folks that are in our community and serving our community in a, in a great way. And I, I just want to say thank you for, uh, for joining us at Community TV. And uh, I, I am always amazed, too, at all our volunteers and myself as well, being a volunteer, our camera people, our crew, uh, and we all go through training, and we all have a commitment to Community TV. And so thank you for uh, keeping Community TV alive. Uh, this evening, we've got two guests that, uh, uh, again, uh, one guest uh, uh, is Bruce McPherson, and I'd like to say, first of all, thank you for being here, Bruce. You're welcome. Good. Glad to be here. Uh, Bruce, and I'll get into a little bit more detail, was uh, elected uh, to the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors in November 2016. He represents the 5th di District, which includes the San Lorenzo Valley, most of Scotts Valley, and a small part of Santa Cruz. And I will give you a lot more detail, uh, but not the whole thing, because we'll be here all night, because he's uh, done sorry. a lot thank for our community. <laughs> Thanks for to serve. Yeah. And then uh, our other uh, guest is, uh, is becoming much more of a familiar face uh, in Santa Cruz County. And as you all know, um, we've got uh, the jewel of, uh, of Monterey Bay. And I, I think that uh, we can all look to Cabrillo College for a lot of good things. And, uh, and we've got a new president uh, and superintendent, and that is Matt Wettstein. Thank you for being here, Matt. Thank you, Lou. Okay. It's great to be here. The uh, college announced that the governing board reached a tentative agreement um, some time ago, a few months ago, uh, with Matt. Uh, to lead the administration after President Laurel Jones uh, upcoming, uh, gave her upcoming retirement uh, in, in January uh, of, uh, and she uh, stopped uh, working at the school and has gone on to retire. Uh, and there was uh, a, a host of other very high, highly qualified uh, folks uh, in a field of, of four finalists. And um, it, we came up, uh, the school I should say, came up uh, with Matt as a, 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 just an amazing um, leader. Uh, he comes in with uh, being, um, uh, having leadership skills uh, at uh, San Joaquin uh, Delta College. Um, the board unanimously picked him uh, out of uh, this field and said they were all agreeable that he was definitely the best choice. Um, he brings a broad uh, amount of leadership skills, uh, research, strategic planning, uh, instructional experience in both at the California Community Colleges and at the state level, um, and uh, along with the uh, Carrillo faculty and staff, um, everybody at, at Cabrillo is very excited to have uh, Dr. Wettstein here uh, at Cabrillo, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, launch the next 60 years of Cabrillo uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> under his leadership. So thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, Lou. It's a pr pleasure. We've got all kinds of exciting things happening in the county, uh, and, and who more to talk about that than um, uh, Bruce McPherson. Uh, he served uh, two terms in the California State Assembly, 93 to 96, and two terms in the California State Senate. Uh, following the resignation of the California Secretary of State in early 2005, Bruce was confirmed unanimously uh, with both the Assembly and the Senate to be the Secretary of the State. Now, this is the whole state of California. And uh, he was recognized as a legislator of the year uh, by numerous organizations and foundations. And I, I have to put a, a little uh, side note in here. I think we're extremely blessed to have Bruce uh, serving in the capacity that he does. He loves his community. Uh, his family goes back generations, and uh, he's uh, certainly uh, shown a lot of his love for the community and all kinds of different things that he's done. And uh, thank you for your commitment to that. I'll read a couple other things. Um, he a five-year uh, five-year effort to explore it in a regional community choice energy agency. Uh, he spearheaded, uh, and he le it led to the establishment of the Monterey Bay Community Power, a joint powers agency, which includes 19 jurisdictions. Uh, from the Tri-County region began serving more than 200,000 customers accounts in July 2018 and Supervisor McPherson chairs the MBCP Policy Board. So uh, a lot of leadership skills, uh, serves on the Agency on Aging, Association of Monterey Bay Government, uh, Governments uh, Board of Directors, California State Association of California Board of Directors. If I keep going and going and going, we won't have time to talk about the fun stuff. But, all right. uh, thank, thank you for all you've done. Thank you. Thank you. So, some of the questions, um, you know, certainly uh, they are important, but I think I'd like to uh, start, Bruce, if I can, with asking you what's been going on at the county. And uh, maybe once we get past that, I want to see, if, see if, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a little definition uh, and defining uh, some of the uh, things that a, a, a county supervisor does 
uh, and, and your jurisdiction, we've given that over. But some folks out there just are unaware. Well, what does a supervisor do right. and what's going on in your district? Right. Well, the supervisor does plenty and we have a great board of supervisors that I, I really enjoy serving with. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome Matt to uh, Santa Cruz County and Cabrillo College. My brother Fred was in the first class there, starting he quarterback was. years, was. just a few years ago. But, but welcome here, and he's done a phenomenal job in getting everywhere to see and meet everybody he can as quickly as he can. Uh, there is plenty going on in the Board of Supervisors, and we, we uh, cover a broad range of, of issues from public safety to health care, human services, uh, parks, you name it. Uh, it's, it's more diversified, uh, frankly, than somewhat than when I was in the legislature. You had all those subject matters, but you are the deciding factor when you're a county supervisor in all these different types of subject matters. Uh, in the state legislature, normally you would be assigned to a five or six committees and uh, focus on those. This is the whole gamut. And it's, uh, it's a, been a true pleasure to serve these past six years as the fifth district supervisor. Um, We've, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm really interested in, in discussing some issues that are coming before us right now. Uh, well, for, first of all, in Felton, uh, on September 21st, Friday at four o'clock, we're gonna have a groundbreaking for the Felton Library. Yeah. Something that has been in a vision for 10 or 15 years, and we're finally there. Thanks to the friends of the Felton Library, Nancy Gert and uh, the Mosher's and uh, oh, it's Donna Zeal, so many uh, of our community members have just kept kept their uh, foot on the ground and, and said we're going to make this happen and the way we're going to make it happen we just had the bids uh, approved f to build it and uh, what's most exciting to me is that next door and th they felt th the library will be uh, located next to the Felton post office mm -hmm. and then just right adjacent to the library is going to be a discovery park or an interpretive center mm -hmm. so uh, it's the first of its type I believe in California Mm -hmm. And so it's been a great team effort to get that done. It's taken a lot of work, and I'm just really excited. This is one of the, it is the most exciting thing I've done as the county supervisor mm -hmm. to see this become a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that has uh, been very, very important. Uh, we, we got funding for a, a Bear Creek Park up in Boulder Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we stipulated that some funds would be from the measure uh, D uh, measure that was passed, the transportation measure a couple of years ago, that $10 million was specified for Highway 9, which is Main Street, San Lorenzo Valley. Mm -hmm. And we especially have some work to do in getting the, the, the morning and afternoon uh, traffic nightmare before in front of the schools, get, that, get some, allevi uh, get some uh, uh, relief so people can get through that maze uh, as quickly as we can. It's probably four or five years away, but we're well on our way, and we've had great cooperation with Caltrans at the same time. Okay, so uh, groundbreaking tomorrow. Right. Uh, at what time does that occur? F at four o'clock. Now you'll be there? Yes, I will. Okay, very I'll good. I'll be the MC, and uh, I, it's really exciting. Okay, good. Well, congratulations on that. I know it's been a, a, a process for you, and it's been a successful one for you. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me that uh, once again it, you've uh, done something so uh, so done so well uh, in the community and got something accomplished. And I, I think if we look at a lot of the things that you've done, there's been a whole bunch of those. But this is the most uh, prominent one uh, and most right. recent one. So uh, yeah, congratulations on that. Um, the County Board of Supervisors uh, approved a, a placing a sales tax measure on the November ballot. Uh, and tell us what uh, a sales tax ballot does. Uh, and, and how does it work and what's going to happen if it's passed? Yeah, it's, it's good and I'm glad you raised it because there's some nuances to it that is a little different from your general sales tax. This will be a half cent sales tax for the unincorporated area. Although, but because of recent state law, the, uh, everybody in the county, including city residents, will vote on it. They will not see their sales tax increase by a half a cent, which is the proposal for the unincorporated area. Can we camp out there for one sure. second? Um, we were in another meeting yesterday where you made that announcement, and it was great stuff, and I think it's important to know that uh, although the whole county is voting on it, uh, the only ones that uh, will, will see that half a cent will be the unincorporated areas, Businesses. so the whole county won't. Correct. The cities, the four cities. Uh, and the county will not see their sales tax go up. And when, uh, if this should pass and get up to nine cents, mm -hmm. uh, it will still be the, the lowest. Uh, there's a couple of cities that have a nine cent uh, sales tax. We've been, we're below 
what everybody else is now. And uh, the reason that we're, uh, I want to make sure that people know it's a 12 year limit and it has a, uh, an oversight committee too. So it will have a good uh, look over how the monies are spent. Um, it is really uh, important because when, uh, for two reasons, we, uh, we're directing, we, we just passed a strategic plan that took over a year to develop in the county. And there's two shortfalls that we have right now. And that is with our treatment of those who are mentally ill or in need of help uh, out there that uh, result in an arrest. And the sheriff's department is st uh, strongly behind this because th there it has increased. So we have 10 of these, the, or the sheriff's department has 10 of these arrests per day, 300 a month. 10 per day? Per day. So and it used to be awesome. five years ago, probably a couple a day maybe. Yeah. Okay. And, and, but that's reality. And so what we want to do is fund uh, additional sheriff's deputies and some health and human service uh, personnel and get a clinical services program going so when we arrest these people or we take them in, we can treat them. Sure. It just hasn't worked, the revolving door in and out of jail. And so we want to see that uh, addressed, I think, okay. in a real humane manner and uh, I think a, a really sensible manner. So what I'm hearing, Bruce, is that there's definitely, definitely some need uh, throughout the county uh, for uh, the extra half a cent. Uh, in, 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 a, in a sense, you've got an earmark for some very, very important things that need to be done. And even when we get that 9%, we're still going to be one of the lowest, if not the lowest, in the state? Yes. Well, not in, in the county, for sure. I don't know that in the state. I think most are at nine cents. Uh, okay. I don't know that count from 470 or 80 cities. Okay. But uh, the, and another another facet of that sales tax, when uh, the recession hit and uh, several years ago, of course, uh, we we uh, or the county, I wasn't on the board at the time, but understandably, the county put the parks department within the public works department. Okay. And uh, virtually nothing happened because we didn't have the funds to do it to uh, do the, uh, the services that we needed for parks development. We are, we are addressing that now, and this is where a, a big part of this funding from this half cent sales tax would go. Uh, a couple of the parks would be that the, uh, the park that I mentioned right near the uh, Felton Library, but uh, probably the one that is most recognizable is Leo's Haven in, mm -hmm. uh, on Chanticleer Avenue in Live Oak in the Mid County would be a park for uh, those uh, uh, needy children that uh, have, have some disability of some type or something uh, of that nature, that uh, we would, they would have a park that they can go to and really work. There's one over in Salinas, and I think mm -hmm. that's the closest one. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal, and there is a group of people who have mm -hmm. been phenomenal. They've raised over, I think, a million or two million dollars, and we want to help them make this become a reality, and I think it'll be a tremendous asset. Uh, there will be parks developments uh, in every each of the five supervisorial districts uh, under this uh, measure G if it should pass. Mm -hmm. And wow. it takes a majority vote to pass. A majority? So yes. just, just over, okay. So yes. not a super majority? No. It's traditional it's a for, majority okay. vote. Okay. Tell us a little about, uh, and, and I'm not sure if this uh, ties into this, uh, s that we are now considered to be a self-help county. What, right. what happens with that, and how did that happen? That happened because the voters uh, two years ago passed Measure D, the transportation measure. Mm -hmm. It passed. It needed a two-thirds vote. It passed with 68 percent, I believe, just about 68 percent. Mm -hmm. And when you are a self-help county, it literally the state recognizes you as such, and they say, you've taxed yourself to help yourself, mm -hmm. and so we will help you. Mm -hmm. And your chances of getting state funding just go up geometrically when you're a self-help county. Mm -hmm. And less than half of the counties in the state of California are self-help counties. So, uh, so and, and let me chime in too, you were, uh, a, a patch on the back, you were very instrumental in Measure D, D getting done, and we did a show on that, and yes. we, we camped out there for a while. A self-help is huge because, and you know the stats on this, how long ago was it that we were self-help, we were getting matching dollars in this well, county? We were getting matching dollars to some extent, every, uh, and every county was, but when you, we, this, this made us a self-help county. We were not until we passed a tax measure mm -hmm. to uh, address our transportation needs in Santa Cruz County. Once we did that, they said, in essence, you're helping yourself, we'll help you. Wow. All right, and they, if you're not a self-help county, your chances of getting any kind of, uh, uh, stipend from the uh, the state is greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Very good. Well, good information. I, th I think that uh, it's important that, especially because we have an election coming up uh, November, that uh, when our folks go to uh, the polls that they need to know, uh, we're not, first of all, we're not even at 9%. We will be at 9%, uh, and that's not high. That's, you know, right no. in the range. Uh, so that's acceptable, uh, and this will bring in a significant amount of money for really good causes, uh, and especially the, the causes that you've mentioned. I think everybody uh, it, 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 it rings true for people, like that makes sense, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And I think when we can attach that to, okay, we're going to mark the ballots and we're going to be, you know, spending a little bit more money, half a cent, wow, it's, we hardly ever see that. Yeah, but, right. but, we will, at, but at the county level, it's going to be significant. Uh, it uh, really will be. It'll allow us to do the job that we want to do with a, a new increasing program, as I mentioned, uh, with the mentally ill or those who need some uh, sure. immediate help and our parks program that the people, when we did our strategic plan, spoke, were loud and clear, we wanted some improvement in our, our neighborhood parks. Jeez. Great work uh, that's happening at the county, uh, and thank you for all that detail. It doesn't surprise me that you've got so much information uh, about it, because I, I just hear you, you're very compassionate about those kinds of things that count in our county. Um, yeah, that, that's a love for this county that is, uh, is unique for somebody that's been, you know, d done so much for it, and, and, and thank you for that, Bruce. Um, there's a lot of exciting news in the, in the Felton Library, and again, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Assemblyman Mark Stone uh, secured this $1 million from the state in addition to 440000 in grants and other funding, and the county has awarded some construction contact contracts. Uh, what's next, if you can augment that a little bit? We've talked about it already a little, but well, the funding that, part of it. That will allow uh, us to, to really move ahead with the park facility next door. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's unlike, it, so in essence, when what you what you, you learn the library uh, of natural your natural resources to an extent you can go right across Bull Creek there mm -hmm. in the river and uh, and you can uh, see see what you just read about in mm -hmm. essence it's uh, it's unlike it's, it's there's some throughout the nation uh, the, this combination of a park and a library but not in the state of California okay and uh, the vision of the people of, of the area is just uh, is really to be commended because they saw this is what we need, we're going to go big, and we're still going to need additional funding to uh, stock some of the library needs inside the library, but uh, we're going to work, we're going to continue to work on that. There's a lot of things that happen at libraries uh, above and beyond uh, what we might think, uh, it, it, you know, happens there, you know, pulling out a book and going down there and checking something out. You know, uh, there's some really good things that happen. What, what, are, what are the kind of things that, let's say, some of the older guys like me are not familiar uh, with a library? Because I think of a traditional library, but what's what's new? I mean, what what, what are they used for? Are they used for meetings and uh, meeting places and, uh, you know, computer hookups and things like that? What yeah, happens? I, I know that people say with the computers we have and the high tech and all, we don't need libraries anymore, but we do. And people reference them. The uh, attendance at our libraries is, is huge. It continues to be so. It keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really a, a community center-like facility as well. It acts as that, and the San Lorenzo Valley is, could deeply need that too. So it's, it's going to fit a lot of needs, and that'll be a, a real critical factor in uh, having this library built. And when we went out to bid, you know, with the building costs going up 15 to 20 percent, we were a little fearful. but. They came in reasonable, I think it was 6% uh, percent over the, the bid, or the estimate that we thought, and uh, that was very welcome. So we, we feel really good. We have a good contractor that has uh, done libraries before throughout the state, and so we feel really good about it. Mm, very nice, and especially the, the funding part of it. Now, did, you said there would be a citizens, uh, COC, a Citizens Oversight Committee for yes. the library building. Can we talk a teeny bit about that, and wh what does a Citizens Oversight Committee person do, or a group of people? Well, it gives uh, people assurance, the voters assurance who uh, support this tax, that we're gonna, we, we've told you what we're going to do with this tax money. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have an oversight committee that's going to see how it's spent, and has it been spent as they said. And do we did that with Measure D on the transportation measure. We're do, we do, or we'll, we'll see that with the library measure as well. It's very essential. It's, it's, uh, you just need it to give people confidence that you're going to do what you said you were going to do mm -hmm. and you're going to stay literally within budget in doing it. Okay, so we've got Citizen Oversight Committee members that are actually uh, making sure that the plan is implemented according to what the original plan was. Correct. And they kind of, uh, they, they, they go to somebody, let's say if they see some abnormalities, we rarely see anything like that. I don't right. think we've ever seen it in our county uh, all the years I've been here, but at least we've got folks from different sectors 
uh, that are watching over and they're responsible and we might have somebody, let's say an accountant or somebody like that or somebody from a taxpayer association or somebody from uh, a, a Cabrillo student government person. So we've got a good uh, following of folks that can kind of just watch what's going on from different perspectives from their areas of expertise. Right. It's exactly right. We, okay. we, we, we have to give that, have to have that in place to give confidence to the people that we, we're going to do what we said we were going to do in the measure that we hope that you will pass. Excellent. Good. Well, let's go uh, on to one more question, uh, and, and believe it or not, the time goes by. Once we get rolling, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, it seems like uh, you know, a half hour is forever when you've got three cameras staring at you, but once we get happening uh, with some really exciting things, uh, it, it goes. <laughs> so we're, we've got one more great question. Um, you were recently named uh, an ocean hero by the Monterey Bay Aquarium for your work uh, to establish Monterey Bay community power. Um, and the program just won an award from the California State Association of Counties. What is the latest on community power? It's in place and it's up and running and it's the most satisfying thing I've ever done in my public service life. Give, give it, me more details. It is going to provide you carbon-free power at less cost with a local governing structure to oversee it. Uh, I started with this throughout my office uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. We were going to first of all do it with uh, f the four cities in Santa Cruz County and Santa Cruz County. I said, you know, I, I think the, the, uh, the Monterey Bay Area County, San Benito and, and Monterey as well as Santa Cruz, they would buy into this. Mm -hmm. It's mainly for, for uh, environmental purposes. I mean, that's the key ingredient to it. But when you can get carbon-free energy, mm -hmm. uh, that will allow us to meet our greenhouse gas emission standard reduction mm -hmm. that was set for 2030, we're going to reach it next year, 2019. Say that this. one again? The greenhouse gas emission criteria that we ha were supposed to meet by 2030, we're going to we will have met it next year, 2019, wow. because amazing. of this. Okay. And okay. we, uh, to start up costs, we had to borrow some money, about 13, 14 million dollars. We thought that would take us two years to, uh, to get, mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, cover. We, we're going to cover it next month, seven months. So it's been a very uh, efficient and a very environmentally sensitive, and we have a local governance structure. We have a policy board we, uh, that oversees it of elected officials. Mm -hmm. I'm the chair of that board. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, this is the first one of its ki uh, type uh, at inception to be a multi-county uh, agency, and I'm, I'm just, I, I, I don't want to say I. I just I can't believe the cooperative effort and the teamwork that went into this to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just uh, so appreciative that we have 16 cities and three counties, uh, 235 to 50,000 hookups, uh, covering about 800,000 people hmm. in in the tri-county area. First yeah. one of its type in the state, maybe yeah. the nation. And uh, it took a little more time because of that, but mm -hmm. it's worth it. Could this be a prototype that other cities uh, and other uh, areas follow because it's been so successful in such a short period of time? Yes, there, there are other uh, community choice energy agencies throughout the state. There's about 17 others, I believe, but mm -hmm. they're, well now they've, they've kind of, a, a couple of them have gone to a second county or uh, inclusive, more inclusive cities. Uh, <clears throat> um, but um, yeah, I, we're a model and the way we're set up with the policy board that is elected officials and the operations board is made up of um, your engineers, your uh, county administrative officers, city managers, and they oversee the operations of it in a uh, more of a, shall we say, maybe a fiscal sense, but we make the policy decisions at the policy board. It's worked out phenomenal. And then we have a community action, uh, community uh, council too. Mm -hmm. uh, in this tri-county area, People are involved in their political structure around, sure. and uh, we, um, uh, we we want to make sure that th those that are outside of the elected, uh, being elected, or on uh, you know in a in a managerial uh, government managerial uh, part of that system, we want to make sure the uh, the people in the community and the, uh, are represented too. So we have mm -hmm. three boards, in fact, but the final decision comes with the policy board. Amazing. Good stuff. Um, and could you give us any other input uh, about anything that's kind of uh, important that you feel like you'd like to talk to 
uh, about uh, with our, uh, our listening audience. And, and there will be a couple minutes at the end to summarize, but uh, anything that you can think of that's kind of off script a little? Yeah, and so <laughs> yeah, and then we'll go to Matt here pretty soon. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the one thing that's really critical in my estimation is Proposition 6 mm -hmm. that is going to be on the November ballot. Uh, there was a bill, Senate Bill 1, that was passed last year and signed by the governor to increase your gas tax by 13 cents, the first gas tax increase in the state of California in more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, it, it provided about $500 million a year and probably $5 million plus to this county. Uh, now uh, there's a referendum in place to say uh, we, we want to wipe that out and make any, any gas tax, any transportation-related transportation uh, tax has to be approved by the statewide voters, which mm -hmm. this took 20 years to get done through a legislature. I don't know what you can do uh, statewide, but this will, in essence, cripple um, the, the, tax uh, the transportation advances we've made just in this last year. Mm -hmm. And you've seen the projects throughout the county. There's plenty to do, especially after the storms of uh, 2016 that we need to do, but uh, we're on the right step uh, and we, we're able to do it. Before this took place, we're, we have 600 miles of roadway in the unincorporated area, and you should probably uh, address half, or not half of it, but 10% of it, 60 miles of it a year to just keep up. We were only able to keep do 10 or 12 miles of it. Hmm. And now we're, we're really making some headway and getting it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, um, I, I think that uh, if this passes, um, we're going to our, our our efforts uh, to address um, our transportation needs, whether they be in uh, transit, uh, uh, you know, the special care transit facilities, uh, uh, bikes, buses, uh, uh, tra uh, pedestrian. Um, it's going to be short change. It's going to take us years more to get accomplished than we could otherwise if this is rescinded. So. If, if a yes, the way it works, if it's a yes vote, you rescind that income and revenue stream for all the counties. The state gets half of the revenue from Proposition 6. The local cities and counties get the other half. So it's, it's a fair trade. It took years to put together. Senator Jim Bell from Santa, Santa Clara County was the one that was the author of it. Um, I think it's one of the most important things we can do, and I, I want to give some uh, the, uh, people assurances too on transportation. In my years in the legislature, I saw other agencies come in and steal from transportation funds. Uh, Prop 69, just last June, mm -hmm. voters overwhelmingly approved uh, transportation money uh, that is allocated for transportation stays with transportation. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be any more of this robbing. So the money that will come from this S Senate Bill 1 uh, will stay with transportation needs in the state of California and our local cities and counties. So if, there, if we do have a, a no on that uh, as opposed to a yes, and it's going to significantly uh, impact us negatively in our county to the tune of $5 million. Yeah. A no vote means uh, is, uh, I'm, I've got to be careful not to, uh, that means that you're going to wipe out yeah. Uh, the the tax the taxes yeah. the revenue right. source so okay. that's what that would be if you want your roads fixed and your transportation network improved you'll vote no on Proposition Six okay okay very good very mm -hmm. good thank you thank you Bruce and uh, yeah as usual uh, some great information a lot of detail uh, and I think you summarized uh, the importance of looking at it, all these uh, initiatives and ballots uh, when uh, when we go to the about uh, uh, the voter polls. Uh, in November and, and what we can be doing. And I think there's going to be a lot more coverage uh, and the Sentinel does a great job in picking that up too as well. So um, yeah, thank you for that and, and getting us kind of the inside track with what's happening and how it's going to affect us personally. So good stuff. So Matt, um, gosh, good stuff for you um, uh, being new uh, at Cabrillo. Um, you uh, <laughs> being new at Cabrillo in, in Santa Cruz County, tell us what's uh, exciting about moving to this area from the Central Valley uh, other than the great weather we have. <laughs> so, uh, and any challenges uh, and opportunities you see in making the move to the, uh, this part of the uh, coastal area? Well, first of all, let me say thank you, Lou, for inviting me tonight, and also Bruce for your service. Um, real short story, when I moved to California in the Central Valley back in uh, 1994, I think Bruce might have been in the legislature at that time, and I had to teach a California politics class my first semester here in the state. and. Uh, I started studying some of the legislators and some of their bill success rates and 
who was better, who was worse. And Let me guess on that. Uh, <laughs> this guy uh, uh, yeah. to my right had a pretty good <laughs> track record for getting some legislation through the legislature back in the day. So okay. appreciate all the Thank service you. that you've given. Yeah. You know, um, I've, I've been really blessed moving here from the Central Valley. I was living in Stockton. Um, obviously, it's a weather change, but it, it also has some unique assets uh, living here and working at Cabrillo. I was interested in the college because I had, I had known some people who worked here mm -hmm. before coming over to this area and um, had always had a great reputation uh, and my estimation of their skill and ability was always very high. Uh, all of that has been validated uh, ever mm -hmm. since I moved over here. Mm -hmm. The community response to me being new to the college and, and going around to places like county board meetings and. Um, Rotary Club meetings has just been fantastic. Mm -hmm. the, the, the people in this community love the college. There's a lot of latent um, support for what the college does and what it means for the community. And so to me, that's a real opportunity to make sure that um, we keep Cabrillo, as you were saying, a, a jewel of the peninsula. People have good experiences. I want them to enjoy their, their time at the college. Um, I often talk about uh, my values that I want to bring to it as president as um, three that are very important to me, which are about um, the need to be compassionate with our students and with the community, to, f to foster compassion, gratitude, and trust. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully, you know, if we lead the institution well, uh, people will put their trust in us to do, to, to do good things with students and to do good things with the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. um, the housing market's a little different here than it is in Stockton, I'll tell you that. It's a lot more expensive to buy a home, yeah. but um, I've been blessed to um, find a place to rent uh, and I'm really enjoying it here nice. in the community. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, you know the differences between the culture that you have, uh, let's say in San Joaquin Valley, uh, as opposed to here, um, are you adjusting well with that? And, and what are some of those challenges? Because uh, we're, we're a unique uh, uh, community, and, and certainly uh, at Cabrillo, uh, and the reason I call it the jewel, uh, it, I, you know, it's academically one of the, uh, the, the highest ranked uh, community colleges in the state. I think you know these stats better, probably better than I do, uh, as well as in the nation. Uh, I, and I think that, uh, you know, certainly the things that are brought to Cabrillo, uh, you know, for uh, being seen as that it took a lot of hard work. Uh, and when they passed, uh, you know, the baton, so to speak, I was there and I saw the interviews and, and I think you were doing an excellent job uh, and you were uh, certainly uh, the most qualified person uh, uh, to do what you're doing. Um, and I, I think that, you know, in terms of uh, what we have at Cabrillo um, is sometimes underestimated, you know, from, from the community at large. Well, it's a community college. Uh, if my child gets into four-year school, Whoa, I like to say something to those people out there. It's if your child gets into a four-year school, but you have an opportunity to do Cabrillo, um, I'll talk about a personal experience, uh, and uh, it's, it's a neat one. Uh, a, a member of our family uh, did all their lower division stuff, uh, and she went on to UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the, the finest academic uh, institution publicly uh, in California. Uh, and in that, um, I did kind of a gauging, and, and I, I asked uh, my, my daughter-in-law, Mm -hmm. I said, uh, she's a school psychologist, she's in school uh, education now, uh, and, and I asked her, I said, what, what classes would you say were harder at Berkeley than at Cabrillo? She goes, they were all a little bit easier at UC Berkeley. She goes, I got what I got to take on to grad school, and she's a brilliant girl, she breezed through at Cabrillo. Um, kind of a personal testimony to, you know, all our family have all gone to uh, uh, Cabrillo. I love Cabrillo. My wife and her sister, I joke about it, but they were the, one of the first graduating classes in the hygiene program, uh, and they both re re recently uh, uh, retired. Mm -hmm. um, so what Cabrillo brings to our community I I is amazing, uh, and to have you uh, at the helm running that gives a lot of people a lot of confidence, uh, and that, that's, that's kind of a neat thing to have. The culture of shock for sure is a little different. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of different things going on, but I understand you do swimming, and so are you, are you thinking of doing some swimming in, uh, into the bay and, and uh, <laughs> with or without a wetsuit? <laughs> uh, I, I was a competitive swimmer when I, when I grew up. I swam all through um, from age five till I was 18 years old. Okay. Not quite good enough to be Olympic caliber, but um, just below that level. Okay. And uh, I, do, I do enjoy swimming. I enjoy hiking uh, and being out in nature, biking. 
So all of those attributes of living here on the Central Coast and in a place like Santa Cruz County are just wonderful things to, to take advantage of. Haven't yet bought a wetsuit. Uh, I still am, am going out into the ocean, just uh, um, native style, I guess, with a cool. Speedo. Uh, but um, I'm enjoying, <laughs> I am enjoying uh, boogie boarding, kind of taking that up, and I haven't yet quite tried to learn how to surf, but I think that might be in my future. You know, the other thing I'll say about the culture change here, and, and this goes back to some of the comments that Bruce was making about Measure G and the sales tax. Um, I'm fortunate to be on the Santa Cruz County Business Council in my role as president of Cabrillo. And uh, we had a meeting this morning to talk about does the, should the business council endorse um, support that voting for that measure. Uh, and I have to tell you that if that conversation were taking place in Stockton or Central Valley, it would have been a very different conversation. But here in this county, the, mm -hmm. the business community unanimously voted to support voting for that tax measure. Mm -hmm. And so you have things like that happen where the business community is a very different place uh, and a different way of talking about values uh, and taxing the, the community and so on. Uh, and you also have, I, I have to say, there are probably more cannabis operations here than there were in the Central <laughs> Valley. So you have that going on. Too. I gotta do another dude. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce laughs over there. Yeah, right. He's seen us going through that whole thing a lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> It took two years, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's good stuff, Brett, uh, Matt. You know, uh, and I've heard that uh, Carrillo uh, College has launched a new program uh, for first-time students. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's the first year is free. Uh, that is something that is enticing, uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, can you tell us a little more about that program and how it came to existence, but also uh, how uh, kids that are co coming from our high schools sure. uh, right here in the community uh, can take advantage of that. Uh, and again, I, I, I have to uh, reemphasize uh, when I think of, of kids maybe going to a four-year school um, as opposed to going to Cabrillo, um, you're going to get the quality of education here for the first two years virtually as good or better than any place else in the state. Um, and I, you know, I, I would say this too, uh, and I'm throwing in my two cents. Um, if somebody gets into an Ivy League, well, or Stanford, uh, uh, undergraduates, for the most part, there's so much money in the foundation, they're, gonna, they're not going to have much tuition because they got in. It's so competitive. But vir virtually everybody else, 98, 99% of the kids out there uh, would, would definitely do well by giving Cabrillo uh, a second look. Uh, let's talk about that program, but especially uh, the free tuition program for yeah. our kids that are right here. Yeah, I think it... it it's a program that we call a Cabrillo College Promise Program, and it really demonstrates the value proposition that you've been talking about, which is the, the opportunity for a student who's coming out of high school, graduate, graduating from an in-district, uh, who decides to go to Cabrillo College as a full-time student, we've made the promise that that first year of tuition will be free. Mm -hmm. and. The advantage oh, describe full time for, for one Full time moment. means that they're, they're taking 12 units or more. Okay. So typically four three unit classes. Uh, okay. It might be three classes if they've got a high unit math class or science with a lab associated with it. But 12 units or more, mm -hmm. uh, typically that would be called uh, full time. Mm -hmm. So if they commit to do that for fall and spring semester, we're going to guarantee they don't pay tuition for any of those courses. Mm -hmm. The advantage of that is it's, for, it's really well designed for the middle class students uh, or families that maybe they've gotten into a, a CSU campus or a UC or a private. The financial aid package may not be as sweet as they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about Cabrillo stepping forward and saying you can save $10,000, send your student uh, to Cabrillo, mm -hmm. Focus on those general education and liberal arts kinds of courses that are going to be transferable anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get the kind of high quality teaching that you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. the, the secret about places like Cabrillo and the community college system in California is that you have tremendous faculty who are high caliber. They come out of great PhD and master's programs mm -hmm. who have perfected the art of teaching because that's all they do. They're not involved that much in research. Some of them are and are, are quite outstanding in what they do in terms of research capacity. Mm -hmm. 
but community college professors get exceptionally good at teaching. And I have that experience having been a, a political science professor myself. So the value proposition that we're talking about here is free college for a full-time student who's gonna save on the opportunity costs of not having to pay for a UC or a CSU or a private one year full ride or some component of the package that they might have to pay, mm -hmm. this is absolutely free. And mm -hmm. so again, high quality, we're offering it to you at no cost. And I have to give credit to the legislature for stepping in and providing some funding in an environment when the re you know we've had a good run in, in income tax revenue in sales tax revenue coming into the state coffers. In a way, what we're doing is returning in the higher education master plan to a vision of community colleges as being open access institutions to anyone at no cost. Mm -hmm. If we go back to the 1960s architecture of our, our education master plan, that was the vision, that the community college system would always be there free for students to take and anyone could enroll in an open enrollment system. It's really quite rewarding to see the legislature returning to that kind of a vision of the community college system for our citizens. So in terms of uh, you know, the kids staying here, I, th I see some uh, huge benefits in that. Um, many times, in fact, I had this conversation with a friend uh, of the family earlier th today, and uh, they said their daughter went away to a four-year school and really had a hard time uh, the first year because it's a huge adjustment year. Uh, and the second year, she's doing pretty good. She's doing, you know, it, but with the adjustment part of it, a lot of that stuff gets done when you're home and you're in your own home, home turf, and you still got the great education at, at Cabrillo. Uh, I like to say, I'd like to see people do their first two years or lower division general education at Cabrillo. They're going to go to their four-year school anyways. I've never heard anybody say, now, where did you get your lower division? They go, where did you graduate from college? Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Berkeley. Uh, I went to wherever, you know, we've got feeder schools that we guarantee access, uh, 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 admissions uh, that Cabrillo and, and, uh, you know, has. Uh, and, they're, and they're seen as high-quality students that do very well. So my, in my mind, when the parents are looking, well, I want to give, and this is fairly legitimate, I want to give my uh, son or daughter an opportunity to have the four-year experience. I say this, save that two years because um, your son or daughter stayed home, put it to graduate school. Now that's worth putting some money in because you're not going to get a whole lot of money. You know? You're not going to get the same kind of funding that you would normally do. That will give them the edge. They get through the, uh, the adjustment stuff and they're going to have I, I believe a better education by starting their lower division stuff. And they can go through the, some of the bumps and the bruises of, uh, uh, I don't know if I like this class and I'm have to drop out. It's like, okay, well you can pick it up, you know, one class. Uh, but when you do that at a four year school, it takes on a very different element. Um, so I, I like that idea uh, of giving kids opportunity. And uh, when they do go away to a four year school, everybody does, uh, it, it, when they hit the wall, it, what some do, uh, they they do a, 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 a one, their third year away, mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, their third year abroad because they need a, a respite. They need a rest, kind of a change. I think uh, my, my personal family uh, uh, you know experiences are that. And, and my son went away uh, to uh, to a European school in England for his third year, but he needed it, uh, and a very driven student. So I think there's a lot of good that comes by having uh, such a fine school uh, right here. Saving mom and pop a lot of money, just a ton of money, uh, and if they get real motivated to do graduate school, well, you, you saved a lot of money. Um, then it takes on a whole different ear. Uh, and, and a lot of folks um, in this community, it, sometimes they'll, they'll have to go, well, I'll, I'll take a loan out on the house. I'll do this and I'll do that. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. But there's a fair amount of that happening in our community um, because uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough community with, with the high cost of living and housing. And, and sometimes they do that, but uh, not as necessary as it needs to be. Uh, I've never run into anybody uh, that's gone through the educational system in this community that's had any, uh, uh, any regrets having done it that way. Because mm -hmm. ultimately they get their degree from a good school. And if they're a good student, they're gonna stay a good student. Yeah. Um, if we could talk a little bit about, which is kind of a natural segue, um, about uh, a pathway programs um, and how mm -hmm. that works. It seems to tie in with what we're talking about and, and uh, maybe you can give us a little information. Sure, about that. Um, Cabrillo, one of the reasons I was interested in coming to Cabrillo College was that it had been selected as one of 20 community colleges in the state to take part in this, what's called the California Guided Pathways Project. 
20 schools, all community colleges, that have agreed to use this framework for rethinking the way that they organize their institutions to make sure that students have a better and faster route to completing a degree or a certificate or transferring on to get a, a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. The idea behind it is to reconceptualize the community college away from just being open access, sort of a cafeteria model mm -hmm. of education where you put a hundred different programs in the catalog and say, here it is, mm -hmm. pick what you want and, and allow the student to sometimes come in and, and struggle uh, and, f and flip between majors because they're not quite certain what they wanted to do when they enrolled at the college. Mm -hmm. Imagine shifting from that cafeteria approach to one that's a more guided pathway approach that says, we want you early on as a student to make a choice that's informed about the kind of career that you want to have or about the kind of academic program you want to study. And so it's about providing some structured choices to the students very early on in a very coherent way that says, if you're interested in health careers, as an example, mm -hmm. There are multiple options available for you. Here they are. And you might think about scaffolding in your career from an entry level position that might be in um, radiologic technology or maybe dental hygiene mm -hmm. that might lead later to further study for a bachelor's in nursing or even a master's or something like that and provide that kind of guidance to the students. And our job as an institution is to provide clear pathways to them, tell them what the, the job outcomes are mm -hmm. for studying in that field of study, what are the wages that they might earn, how long it's gonna take them to get there, and then to make sure that we schedule courses for them so that they can finish on time and march through a degree. If they stay on track and they tell us they wanna finish in two years or three years, mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to provide that pathway and set of coursework to make sure that they get through. Mm -hmm. And so the college is reorganizing itself around a set of career and academic pathways that are designed to do that kind of work. The other thing I'd like to see the college do is to think about the support structure that students receive as they go through that pathway or as they're making the choice to choose their career. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of community colleges around the country are going to a sort of team-based intervention mode of thinking about how do we intervene when a student gets off the pathway and makes a choice that maybe, not, maybe is not on their program of study. And so in, in states like Georgia, for example, Georgia State University, you see a very intentional interventionist kind of thinking of advising and peer mentoring and faculty guidance where you're, you're serving as a team to help coach those students and get them back on track, mm -hmm. get them into study groups, make sure that they're going to tutoring when they need it. Mm -hmm. And if you think about restructuring that kind of system for students, it really blows apart the idea that the faculty are over here to teach and that's all they wanna do, and the student services folks are over here and that's all they do. Mm -hmm. You're starting to blend those roles and make sure that there, there's a team way of thinking about and people interacting to make sure that students aren't going to get off track and, and stay on course. And the payoff for the state is, and the reason why this is so popular right now is this state needs a lot of well-trained middle skill and high skill workers for this economy to run and stay at its level. And there's a shortage in and a gap in the number of students graduating with degrees going out into 2025 and 2030. So what the community colleges can do to help fill that void is if we get better and more efficient at guiding students to those degree completions mm. or off into a four-year program, we're helping to make sure that the labor market supply is there mm -hmm. for California's economy. So it has that advantage of helping to meet that labor demand that's out there. Mm -hmm. It also has the advantage of saving taxpayers money if indeed we shorten the, the, the number of units and shrink the number of units that students take, mm -hmm. it's more efficient course taking patterns. It means that taxpayers are spending less per outcome or mm -hmm. per graduation or certificate earned. So as a, a way of thinking about it, it not only makes sense on an individual level for students to be doing this kind of an approach, 
it's at a macro level helping to meet some broad societal goals of saving taxpayer money and making sure we crank out graduates for our labor pool. Sounds like uh, it, it, it helps uh, for the families uh, of young people in, in school and certainly uh, the young person themselves to get more uh, guided and, and more directed in terms of a final goal. And, and this is where it's going to take you. This is what it's going to take. This is how many units. This is the classes. These are the prereqs. And, and this is what you need to do once you get there. Mm -hmm. There's likelihood that you're going to have a job uh, uh, potentially out there because you've done the research. Because a lot of times, at least when I went to college, I go, I don't know. What, I, I'm just going to do all my general ed. and. I think I like this and I like that, but you know, I, a lot of kids, I mean, who, who really well, knows? And here's the thing, you know, some students have it really together. Mm -hmm. They're high flyers, they know what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. They don't need a lot of intervention. They need an occasional advisor to nudge them and say, hey, make sure you go into class. Mm -hmm. But there are other students who are gonna need more of that intervention. And so not all students are equal in that sense of need and help and staying on the path. Mm -hmm. And so that's a recognition too that the way that you think about delivering services to students like advising appointments or counseling sessions, they don't have to all be fit into a 30 minute box that's the same for every student because some of those students aren't gonna need that. Mm -hmm. Some students are gonna need more. And so that recognition means that you have to be adaptable and flexible in helping some people more stay on the path and some people let them go. They're gonna be high flyers wherever they choose to go. Sure. They're gonna be great at a four-year university. They're gonna do great at Cabrillo. So it's a recognition of that kind of structure as well to be flexible, adaptable, while we're also thinking about keeping people on the path. So you've got both, both covered, wonderful. Okay, good. You know, interesting enough, uh, it just seems like, again, I've, I've said this a couple times, the time just went, uh, and such an interesting <laughs> topic. Uh, it just zips by. So, uh, you know, I've been, I've been given the six minute finger thing, so we're, we've got some time, uh, but we're, we're, we're limited on our time now. So let's get uh, to some final uh, things, and, and, and I will limit you guys to a couple minutes. Uh, and uh, let's talk about something that you would like to listen, uh, have our, our listening audience remember things coming from this show that they can kind of chew on. Maybe when they go to the ballot, maybe when they're thinking uh, of going to Cabrillo and, and looking at that as an alternative uh, to another school. I mean, what would you like to leave us with? And if we can start with you, Matt, and then I'll finish sure. with Bruce. You know, I think I, I, we talked a lot about the value proposition of community colleges. I think Cabrillo really reflects that in the way that we know when we track our students and they transfer on to UC Santa Cruz or to CSU Monterey Bay or anywhere, we have the ability to track them in terms of what was their GPA when they left? Mm -hmm. How did they do at that transfer institution? And overwhelmingly what we find, and this is true of a lot of the community college graduates in California, they outperform students who started at the CSU or the UC Santa Cruz population. Say that one again. Students who transfer from Cabrillo, when mm -hmm. they go and transfer to the four-year institutions, mm -hmm. they outperform the students who had started at those four-year institutions nice. in the way that you were describing earlier. Yeah. And you need to think about it from this perspective. By the time they've made the choice and completed that, that lower division work, mm -hmm. they're motivated to succeed. Yeah. And so they, they become very high-demand students mm -hmm. And it's a real joy for me to go and talk to people like George Blumenthal, at, for example, at UC Santa Cruz, who just announced his retirement. But for him to say to me, we love your engineering students. Mm -hmm. We love it when physics students transfer to our institution. That's embodied in that mission that we're serving there in providing high quality at a really good value proposition. And so I'm proud to be a part of that. I'm proud to have taught community college for so many years and now to be leading an institution like Cabrillo, it, mm -hmm. it gives me a lot of pleasure and especially to be in a community working like with people like Bruce and, and you, uh, it's just a real joy. Thank you, thank you, very thank good you, stuff. Um, what what a, a great uh, thing that we have uh, in, in a leader as yourself to come in and, and again uh, do the kinds of things that you've done successfully and do them here uh, at Cabrillo um, and, and I'm excited to have you on board and, um, uh, yeah, I, I hope you get into the water. You got to get into the water. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you got to try a wetsuit. It really works. I'm always blown away yeah. at when the kids are doing junior lifeguards, uh, and, and you know, <laughs> they throw them at the end of the pier into the water. And there's a bunch of surfboards around. They go, "Hey, oh, yeah, swim in." I'm like, oh, "There's my little eight-year-old," and they get so confident. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And anyways, so we got some great things here in Santa Cruz. Yeah. But you'll enjoy the swimming once you get into the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bruce. Well, I think just from the program that Matt 
describe what Carrillo's doing, the new programs and the opportunities it provides students that would never, otherwise wouldn't have a chance to get into the higher education system. It's the reason why Cabrillo is probably the most respected countywide agency in Santa Cruz County, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, though, it's it's a couple of issues. Um, we we all I get as many calls on roads uh, and, and cost of housing as much as anything. But if we want to really uh, do a job in re uh, improving our transportation network, people will vote no on Proposition 6. It's as simple okay. as that. Um, measure G, we, we want to address the programs that we have. And, we, and we, we've been very frugal in the county. We have 250 less employees today than we had 10 years ago in Santa Cruz County. And we have a double A bond rating now, our reserves are up. We're being very, I think, very responsible financially. So I feel very good about that. And as far as Monterey Bay Community Power, we've launched. It's going very well. Uh, it's going to pro provide carbon-free energy at a lower cost with local government. And uh, that's a trifecta for me. And I, I, uh, I think that people have, might be a little confused on their billing and so forth. But just look at your charges. They're going to be, I, I would guarantee, 3 to 5% less total uh, than what you had before we became a reality in, in this tri-county area. Mm -hmm. Good, good, Bruce. Thank you for all, all, all that you're doing for our community, uh, and, and it never goes unnoticed. And I think when you know when you get quoted in the paper, I'm I'm the first one to look at it, and I'm usually talking to Pam at home, and I'm going, "All right, Bruce is doing some good stuff as usual." So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and, and all our county supervisors do a great job. They do. But, yeah, uh, so yeah, you've got some to work great. With. Thank you, thank you so much for what you do. Um, you know, once again, uh, community TV. Uh, we have to thank each one of our uh, our volunteers tonight, and they're all volunteers, uh, including myself. And uh, again, um, to bring this to you is exciting. Uh, I love community TV. Um, if you have opportunity, come down to our studios sometime. Uh, we have an outreach uh, uh, to the community at large. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening. Um, if you're watching, a lot of our government um, uh, meetings are, are done uh, on uh, community TV. Uh, and you can watch those things, but there's a lot of other things that are happening and there's an outreach so that community TV can actually uh, make the things available to you uh, in the private sector, uh, such as our cameras and our crew, and, and to be able to do those kinds of shows that, that we do. Um, and we've got some really fun things coming up, some exciting things. Um, Chancellor Blumenthal will be on uh, one of our shows uh, in the near future within the next uh, four weeks, I think it is. Uh, and then we've got, um, We've got a lot of our uh, electeds that are coming on, and as you can see, electeds are great uh, sources of information. Um, but you know, do come back uh, and watch community TV. Um, and I always tell people, it's not like people are flipping through and I go, "Oh, I'm going to watch," you know, whatever. But they're just kind of doing it inadvertently um, and passing through. And it's it's excellent place uh, to, to get a lot of good information. So again, thank you for all your support. Um, and I just want to say, uh, keep coming. Uh, to community TV and watch for our uh, uh, some of our uh, announcements and coastlines uh, and as well as the uh, business digest section uh, of the Santa Cruz Sentinel um, so any last comments any one last we got about 30 seconds left I think <laughs> I'm glad we have <laughs> I'm glad we have you know, and, uh, <laughs> no, it, it's great to uh, it's a thrill for me to to serve Santa Cruz County in this re, uh, in this elected position um, I'm love, I've tried to retire three times, and I failed all three times, so I'll have to talk <laughs> with you about <laughs> passage and failure. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate so, it. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Thank Good you. See you. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. It, just, it always does go faster than you think. It you know, does. It does.